Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala bala ayla habitu fillah Islam requires defense and it's up for up to us from Ahlul Sunnah to defend Islam right now as Muslims in general and Ahlul Sunnah specifically we face three threats the first threat Habiti Filah is from the secularist those people who even if they say La ilaha illallah they claim they're Muslims but in fact they worship democracy so if democracy says two men can marry they're with that if democracy says uh, that it's permissible to rule by other than the laws of law they're with that if democracy states that interest should be halal and should be for everyone and it's okay to to, to buy uh, one house on interest or oh, you need your college education so you've got to take an interest related loan they're with that these are, this is a part of the secularist ideology and people mutafawat. They have different levels regarding this. You have those who are extreme, who are uh, disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have those who have another level that are just deviant from Ahl bidah Then the next uh, level that the people of Islam are dealing with today are the Shia Rafana. And I just want to make a point out that these are just some of the enemies from within, you could say. Those people who uh, perhaps claim Islam, all of these claim Islam, but yet and some of them are within the fold of Islam but yet they are deviant from the path and they pose a tremendous threat so this first category you have in the east and the west you have in the Arab lands, you have in Saudi Arabia, you have them in everywhere you know you have them in, of course in the west we have lots of them who uh, don't you know they oppose the hijab they oppose everything that Allah says Allah commands one thing but they have uh, decided from their whims that something else is more important. Then you have here the next category is the Rafa, the Shia. And they are an old deviant sect and they have various branches as well. And they have killed Muslims since the inception of their sect. They curse the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala min so they curse those who Allah loves. So this is from one of the ways in which they are not just deviant, but disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they also claim that the Quran is contradictory, that the Sahaba changed the, the message of the Quran in their compilation of the Quran, uh, that the Sahaba rearranged and changed things, altered the Quran. So they are kuffar khalis, they are disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and they hate Ahli Iman and fight Ahli Iman and kill Ahli Iman and this is the case what we have in Iraq we have a lot of them fighting uh, the, Sun the Sunnis, Ahl Sunnah you have them of course Iran is the their major stronghold in the world and you have minority populations around the world we even have them in the west they're spreading their dawah in Nigeria all over Africa so this is something to be very aware of and to do your best to propagate the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before it's too late. Before your own sons and daughters come home and they're rafa the shia, cursing the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, wanting your blood, wanting your head, and signing up to kill and fight ahl sunnah. And you have them, of course, Hezbollah or Hezb shaitan more properly, that they are actually the party of the devil. They are the party of the shaitan. They are not the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although they claim that. And 
The ulama, they have a very important principle called the ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat, that the reality of something, the substance of something, is in its, uh, in its reality, not in its name. So although someone calls them themselves the party of God, but their actions, their belief, and their aqidah, their creed, their ideology, their methodology, is the actions of the shaitan. Hizbah shaitan. They said Hezbollah. So this is the Rath of the Shia, and we have them in, uh, for example, in Yemen, it's a big problem now. Our brothers from Ahl Sunnah are going through a major trial, and the Yemeni people in general are going through a trial because the Hofi movement is now, they've gained so much minimum, uh, momentum due to a small and sh weak central government, and these people are backed by Iran, backed by the Rafida, and amongst them is a mix and a blend the point is, they want governance. They have caused the closing of Damaj, which was a, a great murkas of Ahl Sunnah, especially in the time of Imam Muqbil bin Adi al wadri And they fought them. They killed Ahl Sunnah. Likewise, they caused the closing down of that murkas of Sunnah. Also, in addition, they are uh, caused a great Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad al Imam half of Allah Ta'ala to, you know, out of compulsion to sign a treaty, treaty with him, which is no problem to sign a treaty, but which appears to have compromise in it, but it was for the safety of his students. The point being is they're on the onslaught. I just read today where they just took over, uh, they've taken over the mob, they are in Ib now, taking over Ib, uh, they're just overrunning uh, Yemen. So you have that, and then you have the secularist, communist, Shu'iya in the south. So these are just a little political synopsis, and we have to defend Islam. Right now it's through words, and it's through al. The third category we want to think about, Ahabati Fillah, is the takfiri khawarij, like ISIS, and ISIL, and IS, and whatever you want to call them, and Boko Haram, and Ash-Shabaab, and... Uh, really the Taliban and a lot of these movements and groups that are very extreme they go beyond uh, Islam gives you a straight path and they go beyond it so they go like this they deviate from it and they go way beyond it to extreme the Prophet said beware of extremism this is in every aspect of Ibadah and just to give you an idea, and we've talked about this extensively, so I don't want to continue to dwell on this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, al kitab al-nar, the, the, the uh, khawarij, the sect of the khawarij, those who make takfir of the other Muslims without the right to do so for the major sins, that they are the dogs of the hellfire. If you have hellfire, they're the dogs that inhabit it. And I just read a report, and Allah knows best if it's true, but it, it's, it goes in accordance with the many, many hundreds and thousands of documented reports about ISIL and what they're doing in Iraq and, and Syria. And it was one of their fighters who was just killed. They captured him. The Kurds captured him. And he said, uh, you know, he wanted to die. He didn't want to be a prisoner. Kill me. Kill me. So they actually talked to him. And they, they tried to actually uh, have a monakasha with him. And they took him to the masjid and said, see, we're Muslim too. We believe in Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, no, you're kuffar. We don't want to have anything to do with you. you. I want you to kill me so I can get my 40 maidens in Jannah. This was his whole thing. The point being, Ahabat al is his shidda, his, his intense adherence to the method of the Khawarij. He didn't want to hear anything. These people bore witness that there's one God worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallam, is the last prophet and messenger. And they uh, took him to the masjid, but there was nothing. Khalas, he had received information. He didn't know much about Islam. He was only 20 years old from uh, uh, one of the former Russian republics, Azer Azerbaijan or somewhere like this. And he just made takfir. He was staunch that I must kill you, and if you let me go, I want to be a suicide bomber. This is what they said. This is what was alleged in the report, and the law knows best. So then they eventually shot him in the head. They thought he was way too extreme. This guy can't be let go. There's no reforming him. You know. The point is, is that wicked, the wickedness of takfir. 
the wickedness of extremism, the wickedness of not being Salafi, not following Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the method of the Salaf, Wallahi, it will end you only holding the sword, making the blood of your brothers and sisters lawful. That's the wickedness of this extremism. They don't care about anything. They kill, they cut, they slice, they blow up. They go all beyond, this is what extreme, to go beyond. Tajawaz al hadd They go beyond the boundaries of Islam. And so beware, Ahabat al of all these three ideologies. Also, I want to make the last point is, yes, especially in America, we have the FBI and Homeland Security, who is very, very haris. They are very diligent in trying to set up Muslims. So beware what you talk about. Beware who you associate with. And don't, uh, don't give them the rope to entrap you. Adhere to Kitab and Nawa Surah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that is your safety. Then if they want to plant something on you, it's, that's the way it is. But Allah will protect you, bi But if you give them the rope, you're selling drugs. If you give them the rope you're preaching on YouTube about stuff you have no knowledge about, speaking about jihad, thinking about this, thinking about killing this one and blowing up this one, well, you gave them, you gave them the tools to set you up. So beware, know that they're all around in our misogyny. Likewise in the UK, likewise in France, likewise around the world. So adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Medha of the Salaf and you find safety. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.